At the Central Library, His Excellency the Governor-General opens Wellington's Arbor Day Ceremony. Among those who planted trees were Sir Bernard Freiburg, Lady Freiburg, and the acting mayor, Councillor McAllister. Similar ceremonies were held all over the country, with children doing a lot of the planting. At Johnson's Hill, Karori, a grove was planted by next of kin in memory of the men who lost their lives in the war. With these Arbor Day ceremonies, New Zealanders are helping to make up for some of the indiscriminate tree felling of the last century. For the last time, veteran flying boat Aotearoa comes down her slipway at Hobsonville, Auckland. With her crew is Mr. N.G. Maybe, who's bought the craft for conversion into, believe it or not, a tea room. As she heads down harbour towards her destination at Mission Bay, Altera has all four engines keeping her moving to good speed. But this time there's no takeoff. After seven years of Tasman service involving 8,500 flying hours and well over a million air miles flown, Altera is down for good. A crowd awaits her at Mission Bay and the job of getting her ashore begins. It's a slow job and a unique one for the contractors doing it. Altaira was the second to last Empire-class flying boat to remain in service anywhere in the world. Shortage of vital spare parts caused her withdrawal. The next day, work carries on in the rain to haul the aircraft over the waterfront road. Power lines are raised to allow the 28-foot tail a clear passage. At last, she's across and settling into the site prepared for her. After long and faithful flying service, Altaira starts a new career. On the docks at Kure, Japan, Japanese labourers are hard at work stacking J-Force baggage and equipment ready for shipment to New Zealand. After more than two years as a major component of the British Commonwealth Occupation Force, the Kiwis are withdrawing from Japanese territory. Meanwhile, the Commander-in-Chief of BCOF, Lieutenant General Robertson, inspects for the last time the New Zealand men and women who have formed a valuable part of his forces since the occupation began. In his address to the parade, General Robertson reminded them of the importance of the work they'd done policing their area and destroying Japanese war equipment. He said that the Commonwealth could be proud of their example. And before taking the salute at the final march past, he wished them farewell and thanked them for a job well done. Touring New Zealand Maori rugby team is taking the field at Albert Park Suva for the first of three test matches against Fiji. The Maoris wear the all black uniform without the silver fern and the Fijians are in white with a palm tree emblem on their jerseys. Maoris have done the traditional all-black hacker, the game gets underway in dull weather before a large crowd. From a Maori kick, the Fijians slam the ball into touch. From the line-out, the ball goes down to the feet of the forwards and they all pack round. Both sets of forwards are evenly matched, but the Maoris hook the ball and it comes out to Jacob. Jacob attempts to go round the blind side, but he loses possession, and Illisoni breaks through with the ball for Fiji. He kicks infield, and the Fijians gather the ball in and take it upfield with a rush. There's a fierce ruck, and from the scrum, Jacob passes out to Couch, who kicks for the gap, and Fiji fails to gather it in, and the fast-following Maori forwards swarm after the ball, but they overrun it. The Fijians regain possession, and with a magnificent rush, take the play to the Maori line. They're still going with the ball at their toe. And Samu is over. It's a try for Fiji and three points up. From a scrum, the ball goes from Couch to Pearson, from Pearson to Smith, and Smith kicks ahead, and the Maoris race after it. Illisoni takes a speculator and follows up fast with a great burst of speed. Jacob collects the ball, but he's caught with it by the Fijians, and after a tussle, they take the ball from him. 
The Fijians have the ball again and they break clear and race up the field. They're near the line. There's a fierce struggle for possession. And they're over. Fiji have scored again. At half-time, the score is 6-5 in Fiji's favour, and the resumption of play finds them on the attack again. A clearing kick by the Maoris is taken by the Fiji back line, which swings into action. They're racing for the line, and the centre passes out to the wing, and he's missed it, and Pearson gathers it in for the Maoris and hands it to Charrington, and Charrington races up the line. He in passes to Pearson. Pearson draws his man and passes back to Cherrington, and Cherrington races over near the corner. He doesn't seem to know what to do with it, and he's nearly caught in possession. The attempt at conversion fails, but the Maoris have gone into the lead at last. Play is fast and loose, with both sides striving for advantage, and the Fijians still doing most of the attacking with fast, unorthodox football. Clearing kick brings relief to the Maoris. Both teams are after the ball and the Maoris get it first. Pearson races down the field with the ball. He passes to Smith. It goes past Smith, but Couch collects it safely and sends it back on this side to Cherrington. And Cherrington's racing for the line. And he's over in the corner. Again, the kick misses, but the crowd is seeing fast, entertaining football. And the Fijians are on the attack again with the ball at their toe. Fijians are making ground rapidly. They look like scoring, but a clearing kick by Johnny Smith saves the Maoris. Smith's kick goes into touch, and from the line out, the ball is dropped to the feet of the forwards, and the scrum packs round. The Fijians are making every effort to score again, and they get possession from the scrum. The halfback gets it. He whips out a dive pass. It goes to his backs, but the Maori forwards intercept, and Isaacs is racing downfield with the ball. He passes to Smith. Smith attempts to cut in and go on his own. He's stopped, and he whips the ball out to Cherrington on the wing, and Cherrington's over again, and the game ends with the Maoris the winners by 22 points to six. It's been hard, clean football, but the honours more even than the score indicates, and the Maoris tour has started well.